All right, so we're looking at Chapter 15, Industrial Revolution. And the first part is going to be the different types of economies that, uh, uh, that you can have. So an introduction to the chapter, this is the entire chapter. In this chapter, you learn about the important changes in the way things were made. And all those began, of course, in Great Britain and spread to the rest of the world. You're also going to learn about the industrial, how the Industrial Revolution brought about major changes and where, and where people lived, their working conditions, and the standard of living. All right, so the essential questions, uh, really the first one we'll answer in part one. How does the free enterprise system work? Uh, part two will cover what factors caused the Industrial Revolution. And then three, how did the Industrial Revolution change the way people lived? So understanding economics. Economics is actually kind of simple when you break it down, but economics is how people meet their needs. Okay, so really how you survive. So by making, so producing, distributing, which means uh, shipping around, trucking, things like that, and using goods and services. Goods is, is just an item that that's, uh, has some value to it. And then a service is what, is what uh, most people work in, service industries, uh, restaurants, banks, they actually provide a service. So economists study how people work and earn money, how they save and invest money, and how they use their time and energy uh, and money to satisfy their needs. So really, economy is, is uh, what's being produced, the producers, which is the factories, and then the consumers. So what an economy is, an economy is a system for producing and distributing goods and services. So there's three economic questions that every country has to answer. And all countries kind of kind of do uh, different things when it comes to the three ways that they that they answer how they're going to actually survive is really what it is. So what to produce that really depends on your resources that you have, how to produce it. Okay, whether it's going to be, uh, you know, controlled by the government or whether it's going to be private and for whom to produce. So who's going to get all these different items? So people have unlimited wants. So, of course, we want pretty much everything and are faced with limited resources. So not everybody can have diamonds because they're just not enough. So we only have so much time, energy and resources to satisfy our needs and desires. So every society has to has limited resources to meet unlimited wants of its members, so the people who live in the country. Therefore, every society must answer three basic questions. What should be produced, how it should be produced, and who's going to get it? So societies answer these three basic economic questions in a lot of different ways. And the first one is the most basic, and that's going to be traditional. So in some societies, people follow tradition to answer these questions. They produce whatever their ancestors produce, using time honored traditional methods. So this would be really your, your start of economy. You just produce what your, what your great grandparents and even before them produced. So the different types of economy, traditional economy, the role of government, uh, there's really no role of government at all. And, and this kind of goes back to the middle ages. Really what you have is a, is a feudal Lord that just kind of oversees everything. And, and you're pretty much tied to the land a lot of times in traditional economy. So the freedom of choice you have, the freedom of choice insofar as resources are available to produce. So, you know, you can produce whatever you want, but it's going to be very limited in what you can produce. Uh, there's just not a, a lot of it around. Ownership of all the natural resources is going to come down to whoever the king is or the lord. So they own all the land. And then the price determination back then, it was barter. That's where we talked about in class where you traded a chicken, you know, 10 chickens for a goat or something like that. There's really, you don't even need uh, money in, in that situation. And then which sector uh, answers the basic economic questions? Okay, so how are, how things are going to be produced is really just goes by tradition and customs. All right, the next one is planned economy, which you know as uh, communism. And uh, the role of government, they decide all economic activity. So they decide everything. So under planned economy, uh, the freedom of choice, there's no freedom of choice. You don't get to decide where you're going to work, uh, what you're going to produce, things like that. Ownership of all the natural resources is by the state or it's for the public. So for everyone all at once. And then price determination, the government sets all prices. 
and then which sector answers all the basic, and in other words, says who's going to get what, and that's going to be the state. So the government does everything. All right, free market is what we have. Uh, so the role of the government, there's little or no role in government. Freedom of choice, uh, customers and producers have the freedom of choice. You can work where you want, produce what you want, start your own business, things like that. So all natural resources are owned privately. So the government is not in charge of all the, the natural resources. Price determination, this was kind of hard to understand, but really the prices are set by the market. So different private companies trying to make money on, and they set the price is pretty much what it is. And then who answers all the questions for the economy? The private sector does. So your, your parents, if they own a business. And then, of course, mixed economy is, is just uh, really these two kind of mixed together. So you're going to have some state owned businesses. You're going to have some businesses that are going to be run privately. All right. So the free enterprise system, free, uh, the freedom to make your own choices and deciding what to buy. So you can buy whatever you want, where to work and what to make if you're going to produce things. So people have the right to own property. This is a big thing in, in free enterprise system. You can own everything yourself. The, the government doesn't own it. And you can invest in private business. So I could put money into, say, if I wanted to uh, buy stock from Apple or something like that. So what drives the entire free enterprise system is profit. So this is extra money that is made after all expenses are paid. So, uh, you know, I bring in $10,000, but I have to pay my employees. I have to pay for all the materials that I buy. I have to pay rent, things like that. So profit is whatever is left over after that. So government interference is limited supplies. Uh, so what the government will do is they'll supply some services. Uh, the government, you know, supplies several things that we come to rely on. Government sets the rules, acts as a referee when two companies are in an argument and it makes sure the economy is functioning smoothly. If something has to be changed, then the government's going to change it. So really the most important thing to remember in a free enterprise system is supply. So how much you can produce and sometimes you 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 limit something on your own but supply just means how much how much of a product that you can make so how many iphones apple can make that's the supply and then demand is how much consumers are willing to buy so uh, you know uh, your new iphone comes out and really at first it's kind of a limited supply so the demand is real high so people are willing to spend a lot of money when that new uh, edition comes out. So, you know, that's that's supply and demand. As long as you understand that, you can pretty much understand anything for enterprise. So if you can make a lot of stuff that people demand, then you're going to be very wealthy. So uh, what happens a lot of times in supply and demand, if the demand falls and the supply rises, the price goes down. OK, so people don't want something, but you're still making a bunch of it. The price of it's going to go down. That's when you see something on clearance. And then the other way is the demand rises, but you didn't make very many of something. There was a this, uh, very small supply. Uh, the prices go up. So that's when something becomes limited. There's there's not enough of that thing. All right. So one of your guys from Free Enterprise, Adam Smith. And he wrote the book called The Wealth of Nations and explains the laws of supply and demand. And what he believed is was kind of survival of the fittest. So only the best producers would survive. So only the best companies would survive and each person pursues his or her own interest but is by but is guided by this invisible hand to benefit the common good so he believed that businesses were guided by this invisible hand and that they would do good uh, for everyone which we've kind of found out is really not true in the end but uh, that's that's kind of what he believed at the time uh, so people would Really, what he's saying is your best companies that make the best things are going to survive and things like that. And they're going to be guided to do things the right way by this invisible hand. So laissez fair economics. So this is when the government takes a handoff approach to economics. So they don't they don't get into any businesses. Uh, you know, they don't look into their affairs or anything like that. So this allows investors and businesses, business owners to put their uh, resources where they have the greatest benefit for the economy. So this is that hands off approach. All right. So a free enterprise system, which flourished in Britain, played an important role in the Industrial Revolution. 
So really, without free enterprise, people being able to invest whatever money they wanted to, being free to do whatever they wanted, uh, we wouldn't have the Industrial Revolution. So this allowed investors and business owners to put uh, their resources where they had the greatest benefit for the economy.